song of praise it just says this come on and bless the lord with me everybody sing bless the lord
Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless. Bless his holy name. Father God, we thank you. We bless and praise you and thank you for allowing us to come here on tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the breath that you allowed us to breathe all day long. For surely it was your goodness and your mercy that allowed us to get through this day. And we just want to say thank you. Now have your way in this place on tonight. We pray that you touch every heart, every soul, and every spirit in this place. We ask for a double anointing on our pastor on tonight. We ask that you speak through him in a mighty way, Lord God. We thank you that his words will be words straight from heaven, Lord God. We thank you for the souls that will be saved on tonight. And Lord, we would be remiss if we didn't thank you for the many souls that were saved on yesterday. We thank you that new birth is the house of birth, Lord God. We thank you for every sister in this room. Answer her prayers. Be with her and keep and guide her, Lord God. We thank you that our pastor is a blessed man of God, Lord God. His children are blessed and everything that his hands touch prosper in the name of Jesus. So shall, so shall this service be on tonight. We thank you, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. Protect our sisters still traveling, Lord God. And let us all go home safely, Lord God. And let us continue to be the representatives of your truth, your love, your power, and your peace wherever we go. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, would you clap your hands if you're glad to be here? Because we're on high alert, you don't have to hug anybody. Just wave at people. Let them know how glad you are to be with them uh, on uh, tonight. Uh, I, I want to, uh, you may be seated. Ask that you'll arm yourself uh, with a uh, writing instrument. There are a whole lot of uh, principles, points, and uh, information that I want to uh, dispatch uh, to you on tonight that I believe will uh, serve you, uh, equip you uh, in going forward. I want you, uh, even uh, while uh, we're, we're preparing for what God's going to do, uh, would you just lift that hand towards heaven and impregnate the atmosphere with the sound of intercession. Hallelujah. Now that you've prayed, come on, would you worship him? Come on, open him, open up your mouth, bless him with the fruit of your lips. Come on, give him glory. You've been carrying a lot today. You've been dealing with a lot. You've been contending with a lot. We bless you, Lord. It's so worthy, Lord. For you are? You are worthy to be praised. Come on, let me hear save, sisters sing. Come on, we? We. On we give.
music. Let me just hear your voices. We you father in spirit and in truth because you are worthy you are worthy of glory worthy of praise we give you we give you we give it to you willingly lord Clap those hands if you love him. Come on, I said clap your hands if you love him. Come on, he's deserving of it. Come on, would you worship him? Hallelujah. I want you to join me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter three. If you don't have a Bible, would you share one with a uh, a neighboring sister? Second Thessalonians chapter three. We greet and welcome those of you who are in our cyber sanctuary. I uh, ask that you will invite this with it to as many people as you possibly can. God's going to do something in this room tonight. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 3. Let's read it and declare it aloud together. But the Lord is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. I want you to point at another sister. Point at that sister and say, he will strengthen you. Point at another sister, tell him he's going to protect you from all evil. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. I want to uh, uh, use as a subject uh, tonight, and I want to urge you to take notes uh, as much as you can. Um, I, I want to uh, talk about tonight cleaning house. Cleaning house, subtitled. Should saints use sage? Cleaning house, should saints uh, use sage? Uh, about uh, a month ago, uh, I finally uh, was able to find a home here in Atlanta. You all been on the track with me uh, going through it. And uh, about a month ago, I found uh, a place and uh, was elated, was excited. And then uh, was amazed uh, because uh, two saints gave me sage for my new house. I I didn't know what to do with it. I I, I was unsure of it and all the more uh, why they felt comfortable giving it to a pastor. And then uh, I began to uh, research and study it and found out that uh, the sales of it have gone up by over 200% in the last four years and have to be uh, constantly placed on restock uh, in uh, natural health stores. Uh, Sage is, uh, media ministry, if you'll turn up my monitor a little bit, Sage is burned in India, Asia, the Middle East, uh, but uh, is more pronounced amongst uh, Native American tribes. Uh, The Latin word is very critical. The Latin word for sage is salvia. S-A-L-V-I-A. Latin root word for sage is salvia. Salvia is where we get the word uh, to heal. Amazingly, that word salvia uh, sounds familiar to you because it is out of that same word that you get the word saliva. Uh, And so you remember uh, if salvia, sage, 
uh, means to heal, and that is the root word from which we get saliva. It helps us to understand when there was a blind man that came to Jesus, and Jesus then picked up dirt, and he did what? He spit in it. Why? Because he understood the healing properties that are in saliva. Sage, uh, by itself, by virtue of its definition, uh, means to bring wisdom, to bring clarity, and to bring awareness. Uh, so our elders, our ancestors, were never called the old people. They were called sages. Uh, they were the sages of the family. Why? Because they housed the wisdom, housed the direction, how's the insight and the clarity. So if you needed to know something, you will go to one of the sages of your family, of your community, of the church. Uh, there, are, um, there are some uh, homeopathic and herbalist uh, benefits uh, from sage. And I want to talk about uh, two of them before I, I really hunker down on my point. Um, the benefits of sage, I want to underscore, are not scientifically proven, uh, but there is uh, evidence of its properties and how it works. It is the argument then of those who practice homeopathic medicine, it is not the sage itself that has the healing properties, but sage extract. Uh, and so uh, it is what you pull out of it uh, that brings healing. Uh, and many times you have to look at what you pulled out of your experience, uh, what you pulled out of your issue, what you pulled out of your trauma uh, that helped you to gauge where you are, who you are, and why you had to go through it. Uh, there are two uh, benefits uh, to SAGE, two benefits, uh, pronounced um, benefits, and they are really a SAGE extract. Number one, is uh, it's purifying. It's purifying. The properties in it, um, that they, they are able to fight and fend off uh, bacteria, viruses, and fungi. So the properties that are in a sage extract uh, will fight off of the elements that cause infection, deal with bacteria, causes viruses, clean up fungi. Number one, sage purifies. Number two, I want you to have this. Uh, number two, sage not only purifies, sage protects. Protects against positive ions. Positive ions, you would know, are uh, allergens. Uh, so you know it from uh, positive ions example would be pet dander, would be uh, pollution, would be dust, would be mold. So the use of uh, sage or burned sage uh, highly helps those who are dealing with asthma, those who have uh, acute allergies, those that are contending with bronchitis and other areas that are impacted and connected to your respiratory system. Those two, I don't argue with, I don't have issue with when it is around purifying for infections, bacteria, viruses, fungi. Have no issue with it for protecting those who are having respiratory challenges, uh, asthma, allergies, bronchitis have absolutely no issue with it. It is when we now shift away from that that we begin to have uh, theological issues and biblical conflicts uh, that we're going to unpack for the couple of moments that we have to share. A another word for burning sage is uh, smudging. Smudging, S-M-U-D-G-I-N-G, -G, smudging. The thought of the Native Americans is that certain herbs, I need you to have this, certain herbs carry spirits in them. Their belief that certain herbs carry spirits in them. 
And when you burn certain herbs, hear this, by burning certain herbs, you're calling on those spirits to dispel evil or vexing spirits or energies from a space, from an object, or a person. And so it is their uh, contention that when I am burning sage, I am then calling down a spirit or calling up a spirit to then wrestle with that energy that's in a room, that's in a car, or in a person. So they are those who then burn uh, sage and then put it around themselves, saying that they don't want any negative energy around them or negative energy approaching them. Uh, it's been a surge or a rise uh, in burning sage. Uh, why? Uh, because it is highly practiced now by the New Age movement. Highly practiced now uh, by the New Age uh, movement. Uh, the New Age movement, I want to give you uh, a couple of things before I get uh, to, to uh, the real nexus of my point. Uh, the New Age movement is uh, ancient prax practices in a modern context. Ancient practices in a modern context. At the core of New Age belief systems, New Age belief center, uh, systems is centered around energies. And so you'll notice that the catch, um, uh, catch phraseology uh, in this generation is about vibration, uh, is about uh, energy, uh, and about waves. Uh, New Age beliefs at its core are centered on energies and on spiritual things that are in the earth. It's very critical uh, because we have the largest amount of African Americans in our history on these shores who now subscribe to a New Age religion. And you need to know what the New Age religion is. The New Age religion does not mean that those who practice it are not spiritual. They are spiritual. They just do not believe or submit to authority. This is very critical. They are spiritual, but don't want submission. And so in being spiritual and not uh, wanting submission, they believe through the doctrine of new age faith or new age theology that mortals or humanity through the right wave of uh, devotion and meditation can ascend themselves to become a deity. So they become their own gods. So uh, church or religion becomes a problem because it, it demands accountability and submission to authority for a generation who does not want to submit and has a problem with authority figures. And so these same uh, people who ascribe to New Age theology will have uh, praying hands tattooed on their chest, uh, will have the word God tattooed on their neck, but you cannot assume it's the same God or that the prayers are pointed in the same direction. Got to be careful when people believe they are their own God. And people who believe their own, they are their own God, we don't know how to uh, approach them or even how to attack it because we have minimized demonic possession as those who are foaming around their mouth Eyes are rolling in the back of their head, and they are squirming on the floor. That's how we've recognized demons. But a demonic possession, hear me very carefully, can be somebody who, quite frankly, doesn't know how to apologize. <laughs> demonic possession can be, I can take no authority for my error. Uh, it was you that made me hit you. That's a demon. I wouldn't have cursed you out had you not made me mad. Had you just given me what I asked for the first time, then we wouldn't have gone through all of this. That is a demonic principality and a demonic order. 
uh, the, the spirit of the Antichrist is now slithering into our children and the next generation uh, by putting a seed plot of the rejection of authority and order. Uh, God is a God of order. God is a God of authority. So you can see where demons show up in church, not disrupting of the service, but disruption of auxiliaries. Why do I have to come to rehearsal? I know it started at 930, but I'm going to get there at 10 o'clock and I'm going to give the ushers a hard time until they let me in. All I want is my envelope. Why? Because that is the demonic spirit that is against authority. Everybody stand up for the word of God. I'm going to sit right here. I done had a long day. I don't feel like standing up. Y'all, are y'all still here? Turn to your neighbor. You looking straight ahead. Now, you know that you heard me, uh, but you've got the spirit of rebellion and against anything that calls into authority. It is not an issue of rules when you have relationship. You with me? It's not about rules. It's about relationships. So your child turns 19, turns 20. They still live in that house, at your house, and want to argue why they shouldn't have a curfew with no bills. I need you in here by 12 o'clock. Mama, I'm grown. <laughs> but you still a, a squatter in my house. Y'all done blacked out. Is this making sense to anybody? Uh, because Satan never wants to fall in line to authority and to order. So people who are out of order are operating out of the spirit of satanic principalities. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm not sure whether they have it on the screen or not. Galatians chapter 5. Uh, and I want to go uh, to verses 9 through 12. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 9 through 12. All right. I'm off on my own. All right. Galatians chapter 5. And Galatians chapter 5 is Paul's uh, letter. Oh, thank you. Uh, whoever's back there, thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Galatians ch chapter 5. Uh, go to verse 10. Yeah, all right. I'm confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever they may be, will have to pay the penalty. Verse number 11, brothers and sisters, if I am preaching circumcision, why am I being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Verse number 12, as for those agitators, I wish that they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Uh, so Paul is warning uh, the church at uh, Galatia, you got to be careful of people who are in church who teach counter to the gospel. Uh, is that they, their issue is because, this is what Paul is saying, is because I am preaching the whole gospel, because I am preaching righteousness, because I am preaching purification, because I am preaching holiness, now they want to attack me. Yeah. I have done nothing wrong but preach the word of God. I've said it to you before, I want to say it to you again, you really are not... Uh, operating in the oil or the authenticity of the Holy Spirit of God until what it is that you speak on God's behalf is offensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the word of God is not supposed to be palatable to people who are out of order. Yeah, so they, they don't mind at your office you playing trap music at the desk. You switch right on over to the gospel station. Everybody, can you turn that down? <laughs> y'all ain't never seen that? Why, why? Because the gospel in and of itself is offensive. I, I said uh, when I first got here, every quarter there should be a section of the church mad at me. I'm telling you, every quarter there ought to be a section of the church mad about what it is that I'm preaching. And that, for me, is the indication I'm preaching good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, every three Sundays, you ought to be looking, did he say that? 
Yeah, it, it, it ought to be something uh, that is unnerving for you. Can, can we go to Mark chapter 3, verse number 25? Mark chapter 3, verse number 25. Mark chapter 3, verse 25. The third chapter of Mark. Yeah. Verse 25. If a house is divided against his, itself, that house cannot stand. Here's in the context of what Jesus was saying. saying Jesus was saying uh, to those who were peering in and listening, Satan can't cast out Satan. Satan can't cast out Satan. So here's, I'm equipping you for work tomorrow. I'm getting you ready for the beauty salon on Thursday. I'm getting you ready for the nail appointment on Saturday uh, on why you're not burning sage. You got to ask yourself, if this sage that I'm burning is in fact fumigating my house, if it is driving out evil spirits, if it is bringing a place of calm, what is the power that's doing it? Yeah. Now, I'm not doing it outside the house. Watch the satanic property. I'm doing it in the house. If I'm doing it in the house and that spirit is not of God, what have I unleashed in my house? Furthermore, if I've unleashed that in my house, how do I get it out? How, how do I shift it? Because I went all through the house. I mean, I went down in the basement. I'm in the kitchen with ashes all over the microwave. I'm, uh, I'm everywhere. I got droppings all over the house. They said you ought to uh, burn it and place it uh, in places that have the most traffic in your house. So you got to do it at the front door. You got to do it in the living room. They said go in the corners. You go in the corners uh, because that's where spirits are void and are empty and are hiding. And so you got to go into the corners in order to flush these spirits out. So you flush these spirits out of the corners and if they come out of the corner and into the center, then what do I do with that evil spirit? I've now provoked them. I've called them out. Uh, Dr. Winters, I am practicing satanic intercession because I am invoking these spirits that are not holy, that are not sanctified to reveal themselves reveal themselves and here I am saved and I'm telling uh, I'm telling weeds and grass and herbs you have authority over the spirits in my house and no way in there am I calling on the name of God no way am I in there am I calling on the name of Jesus nowhere am I in introspection or meditation or consecration or fasting I'm just burnt that was my only sacrifice was to get matches that Think about it. that is what was required of me was to do a burnt offering. I wish I had Bible readers here. Yeah. So I'm I'm offering up a burnt offering in my house. But I never bring a heave offering to my church. Yeah, there, 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 there's a disconnect. Uh, and so I, I, I want to, uh, my time is dwindling. I got a whole lot that I want to do. Uh, I, I want to, uh, to know where we disagree on uh, the powers of sage and its intention. Uh, the first one is that uh, sage is supposed to bring about uh, greater intuition. It's supposed to bring about greater uh, intuition. Uh, locked up uh, in the DNA of... Uh, of white sage is a, a property uh, that I want you to look up when you get home called Thujone, T-H-U-J-O-N-E, Thujone, which is a mildly psychoactive drug that is in sage, Thujone, T-H-U-J-O-N-E. And that mildly uh, psychoactive thread that is found in sage is attributed to raising intuition. All right? So the first thing sage is supposed to do is to raise intuition, and nobody is asking what I'm going to keep asking in the refrain, under what power? Under what authority? Second thing uh, that it, uh, uh, it does, sage is purported to do, is to um, uh, dispel negative energy. 
So you're supposed to burn the sage and it gets rid of past traumas. Get rid of bad, bad experiences and it's supposed to evict negative energies. On the substratum of that is supposed to change the mindset. So those who are purveyors of uh, this methodology, I will tell you that you use the burning of sage before or to get the atmosphere ready for meditation. And again, I got to ask the question in Socratic method, what am I meditating on? No scripture is involved. No prayer is involved. Just the scent is supposed to get me ready for meditation. I already told you that the New Age Scientology, the New Age doctrine, the New Age theology is I am a God. You remember in Revelations uh, where the Lord says, you offer up worship unto me and your worship is like a sweet perfume. It's like a sweet aroma. And so I want, um, I want satanic aromatherapy. I want that fragrance so it is pleasing for me. I'm not asking how it pleases God. It satisfies my old factors. It does something for me. Now, uh, the third area uh, uh, that is a siren around sage is that it empowers objects. Y'all got to gotta see this, this level of witchcraft is... is, is is in depth. It empowers objects. So you got people who will tell you uh, when they give you a birthday gift, put sage around it. You just uh, you just bought a new couch. You got to put sage around it. You blessing the couch. Uh, you just got a new car. You walking around the car with sage burning. You doing all of that. You done met somebody new. Before you come in here, stand up. <laughs> Y'all laughing, I'm, I'm telling y'all the truth. It's, I, I got to come because I don't want no negative people coming into my house, coming into my life, coming in my space. Turn around real quick. I got to put this sage on you uh, because I am believing, here it is, that this aroma or this sacrifice will have authority, watch this, over stuff that's not living. I'm, I'm burning sage around a chair, <laughs> around a couch, around a car, that I'm giving authority in the spirit realm of inanimate objects. Yeah. I, I so question the strength of my anointing that I believe who comes into my presence can contaminate my spirit. How weak am I that I can't be in the presence of somebody whose spirit is off if I am anointed? God, I can't hear nobody in here. And somebody who is not like God comes into my presence. I shouldn't be the one backing up. It should be them backing up because they sense what's on me. All right. Hallelujah. All right. I, I promised myself I wasn't going to preach tonight. I'm just going to teach. All right. Uh, then the fourth uh, siren around sage. Fourth siren around sage. Is this helping anybody tonight? For those of you who are just getting on, uh, the first siren around sage is intuition. Uh, the second one uh, is to empower. The third one, I said four. The third one is emotions. Emotions. 2014, the study... Uh, was uh, released from uh, uh, Case Western University uh, that said white prairie sage, uh, also known as, and I can't even pronounce it, I'm going to spell it out, uh, and then you all put it in the, in the phonics app. E-S-T-A-F-I-A-T-E. E-S-T-A-F-I-A-T-E. What's that spell? Y'all know your pastor got a GED. E S T A F I A T E. What is that? Let me try it again. E S T A F I A T E. Yes, that. Okay. So, <laughs> White Prairie Sage, also known as that word you just said. <laughs> deals with anxiety and depression. So I'm giving that aroma 
authority over how I feel. They're saying just inhaling that uh, will shift my emotions. Now, let's pull it all together uh, so you all can see it. Y'all are a great class tonight. Is number one, if it's dealing with intuition, it's dealing with my mind, how it is that I think. If it's dealing with the energy, here it is, it's dealing with my heart. If it's dealing with my emotions, anxiety, depression, stress, here it is. It is now taking authority over my spirit. Three different realms, three different dimensions. I can't even get y'all to wave your hand in church and you waving in your living room. <laughs> I mean, you, you casting it all out. Let, let, let me show you, um, because Satan is cunning, because he is a deceiver. Isn't it amazing uh, that we've got throngs of our friends who will burn it, uh, who will practice it, uh, who will utilize it, uh, but if you talk about casting out demons, they call you spooky. <laughs> or you're too spiritual. They don't want you to cast out demons, but want you to push away spirits. I'm pushing them away. I'm not killing them. All right? The, the, the role of those of us who are in the body of Christ and traffic in the supernatural is not to give uh, Satan and his imps a restraining order. We're supposed to give them a death sentence. So when Jesus came to town, Jesus came to town and there was a demoniac said, how many are, what's your name? He said, my name is Legion. And do you know that demons even have a prayer life? I'm telling you, demons have a prayer life. Why? Because he's getting ready to cast them out and the demons start talking to Jesus. Demons start talking to Jesus and say, please, sir, please, uh, can you just put us in something else? Uh, because whenever it is that you cast out a demon, it's got to find somewhere else to live, somewhere else uh, to habitat. Uh, and so if I'm pushing it out of my house, am I sending it to my neighbor's house? Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing because a spirit needs a body. It needs somewhere to dwell. And here it is. So uh, Jesus, what does he do? He puts all of those legions of demons in the pigs. The pigs can't even handle what's in it. And so all of them jump over the cliff and kill themselves. Another sign of satanic entrance is self-sabotage. That I'm, I'm doing stuff to hurt myself. I know better, but I'm like a dog returning back to my own vomit. Because sometimes the enemy don't want to hurt me because he knows the anointing that's on me. So he'll do stuff to make me hurt myself. But the devil is a lie. No longer am I not making decisions that are not going to advance me. No longer am I entertaining people that don't have my best interest just at heart. No longer am I settling so you can be satisfied and I can be uncomfortable. The devil is a lie and he is defeated. So let's go to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. My time is almost up. Exodus chapter 15. Let's go to verse 26. Uh, I hope we got that one. Exodus chapter 15 verse number 26. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what's right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, here's what I wanted you all to have, sisters. I will not bring any on you. No diseases. God, help me in here. Said the children of Israel, you all are getting ready to come through. Uh, your oppressors, the people who set you up for traps, are getting ready to contract diseases, illnesses, and sicknesses. But because you followed what I said, you ain't got to burn no sage. Oh, uh, y'all dismiss what I just said. Because you are in covenant with me, you ain't got to walk around with no mask over your mouth. Because you are in covenant with who I am, you ain't going to be living in no bubble. None of these diseases. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. I want you to lift up that hand. Ah, 
I feel glory. I told y'all I'm trying not to preach right through here. I, I want to speak something that only the mature women in here will receive. I want you, I'm right in the Bible. He says, no diseases are going to come on you. You ain't got to burn no herbs to get rid of it. All you got to do is give me glory for it. No disease. I can't hear nobody. No thyroids. No fibroid. I can't hear nobody. No blood clots. No ruptured ovaries. No high blood pressure. No lupus. None of these diseases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got one last scripture. You may be seated. One last scripture, please. Churches for Sundays. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. And then I'm, uh, I'm closing. Exodus chapter 12. I just need 50 people to shout out loud, no diseases. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those of y'all who have had no physical challenges, don't shout with us. But those of you that had to contend with some stuff physically and biologically and emotionally and psychologically, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I ain't even just talking about physical diseases. Whatever's been going on in your head, the devil is defeated. No diseases. There, there, there is a spirit, hallelujah, there is a spirit of foot uh, that wants to contaminate your optimism. Uh, there, there is a spirit of foot that wants to derange uh, your thought process. There is a spirit of foot uh, that wants you to do damage to your own self-esteem. There is a spirit of foot that wants to talk you out of your blessings and your goodness. There is a spirit of foot that is trying to get you not in public spaces, but attacks you when you are at home by yourself. Hallelujah. I'm talking about when you can't get out the bed, can't get out the car, can't get out the couch, can't get out of that chair, can't get out of the kitchen. There is a spirit that has been trying to invade you. Women of God, what should you do when you feel there's a demonic attack on your house? I'm telling you, you don't need sage. You need Exodus 12 and 7. Exodus 12 and 7 says get the blood and when you get the blood start spraying it over your house so that no spirit of death will be able to come upon your house. I need women of God who are taking authority over your house. I dare to wave your hand like you putting blood on the door. There will not be depression in my house. There will not be suicidal thoughts in my house. There will not be dead in relationships in my house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. I'm... Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. He... I feel his glory now. I feel his glory now. Hallelujah. You don't even know why you came tonight. God said, while you are at church, I'm cleaning up your house. God, I wish I had some worshiping women. While you are in church, everything in your house that is out of order just got fumigated. Your house is covered. Hey, bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. It says I'm cleaning up your house. Thank you. Women of God, lift up that hand. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. He said, I'm cleaning up your house. No foul, nasty. God, I can't hear nobody. No demonic spirit is welcome in your house. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, it ain't happening and your house is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
I need you right where you are. Would you speak your address right now? I said, speak your address right now. God, you are welcome. Walk through my house. Whatever is going on in my house that is immoral, that is illegal, that is unethical, I drive it out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hand. My time is up. Your house is covered. Hallelujah. I speak over every lifted hand. I speak over those of you. you are part of our cyber sanctuary. Your house is covered. You ain't got to burn nothing. The sacrifice has already been made. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said the sacrifice has already been made. Hallelujah. How you standing here? How were you able to survive the wiles of the devil? I need you to know it wasn't sage, it wasn't marijuana, but it was a lily in the valley. It, it was the rose of Sarah. That hand is lifted. Hallelujah. That hand is lifted. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Angels have just broken into your house. Angels have just broken in your house. And in this moment, they're sweeping out the corners. There's stuff that hadn't been discussed. There's stuff that hadn't been addressed. There's stuff y'all ain't talked about. There's stuff y'all done swept under the rug. The Holy Spirit is now in your house. He's now covering the traffic waves. Hallelujah, the FedEx man gonna feel the Holy Ghost dropping a box. I can't hear nobody, some nosy neighbor is gonna feel the power of God. I'm telling you, folk that were trying to visit you, their plans are gonna fall apart cause their spirit ain't right. I declare and decree that it is so in Jesus name. Clap your hands if you love our God, please. Come on, I said clap your hands. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want you to put on uh, in your calendar March 24th. March 24th, if you'll put that in your calendar for me, please. In all of, uh, in all of my years of pastoring, I've never done this, but I really just felt... Uh, a prompting of the Holy Spirit uh, this afternoon uh, for us to be able to do it is uh, March 24th. Is that what I told you? Yeah, March 24th. We get ready uh, to go into a spiritual realm that uh, the faint of heart will not be able to handle. March 24th, if you were out of town for business, tell them you can't go. I'm telling you, if you had another appointment, I need you to shift it. March 24th, I need every person in New Birth is going to meet me here. March 24th, March 24th, I want you to bring the church. That's a Tuesday night. March 24th, I want you to bring your own vial of oil. I want you to bring your own vial of uh, oil. On that night, uh, the elders, the pastors, the intercessors are going to join me in anointing every vial of oil. Hallelujah. We're going to pray over every vial of oil that you bring because I want you to go back home and start anointing areas of your house. I wish I had some worshipers right through here. I'm telling you, the power of God is going to shift. This is going to be uh, the epicenter for miracles, signs, and wonders are going to take place right in this place. I'm, I'm telling you, would you look at the person beside you tell them your, your house it's going to be a sanctuary. Your house is going to be a sanctuary. I, I need you to please put that rumor out everywhere. March 24th at 7.30 p.m. We're going to be uh, laying before God. We're going to be in God's face making a mandate with high expectation uh, for what we need God to do. I need you all to know, in case you didn't know, spiritual warfare is real. Y'all done got real quiet on me. I said... Spiritual warfare is real, 
And I need to make sure that we're covered uh, in every area of our lives. Would you mind standing? I didn't give you a three-minute respite. <laughs> Would you mind standing? I want to do this if I can. Sister, uh, soror, homegirl, co-worker, friend, niece, auntie, mother, grandma, wherever it is that you are and you're in this room and you need a church that will cover you. Need a church that will fight for you spiritually. Need a church that will stand in the gap on your behalf. I want to give you an opportunity to get connected with New Birth. I want you to, to make this your church home. Those of you on Sunday said there's too many people in here. This is the best night to join. I'm telling you, it ain't but a couple of us. A couple hundred. But I, <laughs> but I, I, I want you to get saved to now, tonight. I want you to find Jesus as the Lord of your life on this day. Wherever you are in this room, would you come very quickly, please? Would you come wherever it is that you are? I'm telling you, this is the kind of teaching you need to be under. This is the kind of oil you need to be under. This is the kind of authority you need to be under. This is the kind of balance you need to be under. Hallelujah. On Sunday, can y'all believe on Sunday, at the end of the day, over 100 people got saved on Sunday. No special occasion, but I'm telling you, revival is breaking out in this place. I want you to do a road check for me real quick. Would you do a road check? Would you just ask the sisters around you? Ask the sisters around you, are they saved? Find out if they got a church home, have they given their life over to God? I can't believe y'all ain't gonna talk to nobody. I just need two more. There it is. I just need one more to come. You need a church that can match your crazy. We that kind of crazy church. Wherever you are, I need you to please come. I need you to be in formation with what God is doing. I don't want you to miss. You are at ground zero. We get ready to take off. I'm telling you, a year from now, you won't be able to get anywhere close to where you're sitting right now. Uh, God is getting ready to exceed our expectation. Five is the number of favor. It's the number of grace. I got four. I, I need that fifth one. Come on, Jackson Five. Where are you? I need the fifth one. Would you come from where you are? Even our friends, those of you who are part of our cyber sanctuary, uh, you're viewing with us from around the world and you're saying this is the kind of church I can get with. I, 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 I feel their vibration. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm where it is that they are. That's where you are. You can join even online at newbirth.org. You don't even have to live in Atlanta. No matter where it is that you are, you can be connected to the glory and the grace of God that's in this place. For these super bad sisters who have joined on Sister Circle Night. Come on, come on. They came, they came as our friends, they're leaving. There's my fifth one. You know you were supposed to be with us. This is like, hallelujah. Stretch your right hand of faith towards these ladies. Repeat after me, you're in the right place. At the right time. Joining the right church. Serving the only God. And I know that's right. If you're not right, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want you to be able to reach your purse. You may be seated. I, I want you, amen. I want every lady that can, every person that can, I want you to get an offering in your possession. I know it's a Monday night. I know you just gave on Sunday. I know you coming back here tomorrow. I, I already know it. I know you're going to be here next Sunday. I got it. Uh, but I want every person that can, I want you to get an offering as close to 50 as you can. As close to 50 as you can. I want you to do that. As close to 50 as you possibly can. Pastor, times are tight. How close you want me to get? $49.99. If you can get that close, we'll be all right. As that you'll get as close to 50 as you possibly can. 
Anybody glad you came tonight? Anybody glad you came tonight? Uh, last month I had to uh, go away. I had a parent-teacher conference uh, with my girls. I want to thank uh, Pastor Carrie for standing in for me on last, last month. Uh, doing a, an amazing job. Uh, once you have that seed in your possession, would you lift it above your head, please? You can't feel bad about what you don't have. If you don't have 50, give 20. You balling out of control? Go get that 100. You got it like that. Thank you. Those of you online, you want to give, you want to be a part of what God is doing, we invite you uh, to go to Give Lafayette, text to give. Uh, push to pay or even on newbirth.org you're able to do that everybody's lifting up that hand repeat after me Lord thank you for what you did last year thank you for how you're blessing my church house but with this seed I need you to bless my house in Jesus name amen Bless the Lord. A wonderful uh, lady. Which ushers are y'all? Yeah, that's my people. Bessie. Uh, Bessie Grady Usher uh, board is coming now. Those are my favorites. Uh, the Bessie Grady Usher board is moving uh, amongst you. You feel so inclined and you want to sow the seed for yourself. Uh, you're able to do so at the altar after they would have passed your row. Uh, let me thank you all again. I'm telling you, uh, you all have uh, surprised and shocked and shut me up. It started raining today. I said, Lord, it's just going to be me and the church mothers tonight. Amen. But y'all done come out strong. Thank you so very much uh, for standing in the gap and pressing your way. I know traffic tonight was absolutely horrendous, uh, but you pressed your way. Uh, just a couple of uh, announcements I want to underscore. Uh, and I hope, oh, there you are, Elder Stokes. Where would I be if you didn't love me? Uh, a couple of announcements. Don't forget tomorrow morning is our prayer together at 7 a.m. Media ministry, there you go. If you don't have the prayer number, would you please uh, write that down? We're going to be uh, together or screenshot it. Uh, but I'm going to pray with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Uh, it is not for members only. It's for anybody who needs prayer. Uh, and so I want that prayer number to go viral. Uh, last year we had uh, upwards of 50,000 people. Uh, online with us uh, on the phone line on Periscope uh, Facebook we want you to please 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 uh, make sure yes alright uh, make sure you're on the prayer call I want you to put that this date in your calendar our next sister circle or circle with the sisters is April 20th so you'll know in advance April 20th put an alert on your phone on the 19th uh, so you'll be reminded. How many of you all will covenant with me to bring two sisters or invite two sisters next month? Five of y'all. Thank you. Those are the five that join. Thank you. <laughs> April 20th. Ask that you'll uh, please uh, mark your calendars. Here's something else I need you to put in your calendar. Uh, we've not done it in two years, and now we are back. Uh, it's going to be bigger and better. Uh, we're doing uh, our spiritual women's retreat October 22nd through the 24th in Destin, Florida. It's going to be amazing in Destin, Florida. So ask that you'll please put those, put those dates in your calendar uh, so that you are a part of it. This coming Saturday is our Heart to Heart Brunch, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, opportunities for sisters to fellowship and to have food and to get to know uh, one another. Our own uh, Pastor Kerry is the speaker for that on this coming Saturday. You still have time to register as that you'll please take full advantage of it so that you all don't think I'm doing shameless self-promotion. Uh, Elder Stokes brought me these announcements. Pastor's anniversary is March 10th. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Stokes. Elder Stokes said, please ask the sisters to give one million or more so pastor will feel loved valued and appreciated thank you elder stokes for 
She's got job security. Thank you. It's, it's going to be a great, great day. Uh, our guest psalmist on that day is going to be Sister Ja'Kaylin Carr. Uh, it's going to be our guest psalmist. We're going to have an amazing, amazing time. Uh, so I want you to please make sure that you are part of it. Uh, I think I got everything. Tiffany, you did good. Thank you. Musicians, thank you. Praise team. Y'all did it. Tomorrow night uh, is not our regular Bible study. Uh, we're doing a uh, community and congregation uh, community and congregation town hall meeting on the coronavirus. Uh, and I need every person here, I need every person here, every person who's online, I need you to be a part of it. I, I've got uh, a whole lot of information I need uh, to share with you. It is about to impact the entire ecosystem uh, as we know it. Uh, CDC released a uh, alert on yesterday while we were in church yesterday while we were in church alerting and apprising us uh, that life as normal may change in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, for us to be prepared and equipped and for families, here's what CDC said, for families to have meetings for contingency. To have meetings for contingency. New birth, we are one family. Uh, and so it's very important for me and for us as a family uh, that we have uh, these uh, vital and critical discussions. I've uh, shared uh, with uh, my senior staff that we really have got to do forward thinking what happens uh, if we've got to turn our gym into a shelter. Amen? Yeah, what, what happens if, if we're going to have to make our food pantry not open just on Tuesday but seven days a week? Yeah, what, what, what are we to do if our school has a student that is contaminated. Y'all done got real quiet. Then we got to have real conversation. Uh, do we still right now need to have Sunday school putting kids in small rooms? Yeah, so all of these things we're going to be talking about, we are around, uh, it's hundreds of us in this room right now. And uh, the question I keep asking people from CDC that keeps plaguing my mind is if uh, coronavirus uh, impacts uh, your immune system, what does it do to people who have AIDS? Yeah, put your thinking caps on. Come on now. And if it has a greater impact on people who have AIDS, what is our responsibility if Atlanta is the hotbed? And all the more, what are we to do? Because the demographic that is the most untested are the people who are sitting in this room. As the fastest growing HIV AIDS population is no longer gay white males. The fastest growing HIV AIDS population is now black women over 40 who are single for the second time. Y'all done got quiet and they don't know the game because when they were single the first time, it wasn't no down low. At this level. Yeah, <laughs> let me qualify at this level. Or we're not really doing a diagnostic on how jail culture has impacted us. Amen. Uh, and so tomorrow night, I need you all to come uh, because I want us to be informed. The Bible already warned us of why this is important. It says our people die from a lack of knowledge. Amen. Uh, and I think that the church has got a responsibility to make sure that we inform, we empower, and equip. Uh, and I don't ever want you to say, they ain't say nothing at my church. Because that's what all your friends are saying. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I want you to say, no, new birth, got it. Got it. I mean, even if I got to order up surgical masks that got the new birth shield on it, then that's... Because <laughs> that's the only way I can get y'all to wear them. Uh, whatever we got to do, uh, we're going to make sure that we are a healthy and a vibrant and we are informed church. I'm telling you, it's to your own peril if you are a part of a church that is completely emotional at the cost of being intellectual. For us to feel don't mean that we got to stop thinking. Come on. Amen. Everybody, would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. Y'all don't know how many times I got to talk myself off the ledge from making y'all not hold hands. I, I, gotta, I gotta reprogram myself. Lift up that hand, please. Don't, don't touch nobody. Please. 
Don't touch me. You know, just <laughs> lift that hand right where you are. Amen. Even if I can't touch you, I love you. Thank you, my same five people. Whoever these five people are, y'all are the chairpersons of the pastor's anniversary. Whoever, the five of y'all, we having a meeting after church. Thank you. Lift that hand as high as you can. I, I can't tell you enough uh, how grateful I am to be your pastor, how appreciative I am uh, that you allow me to have uh, access to your soul, uh, that you trust that God speaks to me for your life. I don't take that lightly or take it for granted and not count it as a privilege. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us henceforth now and forevermore. And the blessed people of God said, Amen. Look at the sister beside you and say, see you tomorrow.